and I is I truly love my blessed Savior, blessed Savior, and He ever loves me. And yes, He loves me too. And help me now, I seek His grace and favor, and grace and favor in everything I do. Amen. Amen. Let's turn to page number 235. Page number 235, and after which we'll have another scripture reading and another word of prayer. Page number 235. We will sing the first, the second, and the fourth standards of page number 235. First, the second, and the fourth standard. And if you have it, let's all sing together. If this world from you withhold, and of its silver and its gold, and you have to get along in bigger fit, and just remember in his word, and how he feeds the little bird, and take your burden to the Lord, and leave it there, leave it there, and leave it there, and take your burden to the Lord, and leave it there, and if you trust and never doubt, and he will surely bring you out, and take your burden to the Lord, and leave it there. And if your body suffers pain, and your health you can regain, and your soul is almost sinking in despair, and Jesus knows the pain you feel, and he can save, and he can heal, and take your burdens to the Lord, and leave it there, and leave it there, and leave it there, and take your burdens to the Lord, and leave it there. And if you trust and never doubt, then he will surely bring you out and take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. And when your youthful days are gone and old age is still in on and your body bends beneath the weight of care, and he will never leave you then, and he'll go with you to the end, and take your burden to the Lord, and leave it there, and leave it there, and leave it there, and take your burdens to the Lord, and leave it there. And if you trust and never doubt, and he will surely bring you out and take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Amen. Amen. Where else can you leave them? This morning's scripture will come from Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. We'll begin in verse 1 and conclude in verse 10. I'll give you a moment. Rise there with me. If you have it, say amen. Verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, 
the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had his testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Noah, being warned of God, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, preparing an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteous which is by faith. By faith Abraham which he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Verse 10, for he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Amen. Blessed be the hearers, readers, and doers of his holy word. At this point in time, I'll call upon Brother Hall to lead us in prayer. Let the church say amen. Once again, it's so good to see everybody out this morning, worshiping the Lord in spirit and truth. I hope everybody's in good health. If not, we're all suffering with something. And let's take it to the Lord and leave it there. Let us bow and go to our Heavenly Father. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, once again, you allowed us to come together and bow our heads as one, giving you thanks and giving you honor, dear Lord for all you have done for us, getting us up this morning and getting us on our way so we could be here to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask you, dear Lord, to continue to be with those that who are traveling, be with those that are sick and shut in, be with those that are grieving at this time, dear Lord. We ask you to be with them and let us comfort them as they come toward us, dear Lord, and have the word that you have given us to say to them. We ask you, dear Lord, to continue that be with those that who have went back out into the world. We ask you not to save them in their present condition, but to give them a time for them to come to themselves, realizing that it's you, dear Lord, that controls all. But this morning, dear Lord, we come leaving the world outside and bringing the thing that we have learned that we can continue to strengthen ourselves through your words, dear Lord, and those that does not know you, dear Lord. We thank you for your, the minister that is about ready to come forth, Brother Palamore, to live with the word. Let him not add nor subtract. Let him be thing that he have studied be on his mind and the thing that will not fall on deaf ears, but will continue to grow and help your kingdom grow. We thank you, dear Lord, and be with those that who are seeking you, dear Lord. Let us be able to reach out and grab them, dear Lord, before it's everlasting too late. This is our prayer we ask in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Let us all say amen. Mine is filled with drift transition, unwilling on the work the fools have stayed, willing to build your hopes on things eternal. 
And everybody ought to hold to God's unchanging hand. And everybody ought to hold to his And hold on to my God's unchanging And everybody ought to hold to his hand. To God's unchanging and you want to build, build and your hopes on things eternal. And everybody ought to hold to God's unchanging hand. And, 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 and will and win. And your journey is completed. It will and if and to God you have been true. Oh, well and fair and bright the home in glory and will and you're enraptured. So shall you and everybody ought to hold to it and hold on to my God's unchanging. And everybody ought to hold to his hand, to God's unchanging. And you ought to build, and your hopes on things eternal. And everybody ought to hold to God's unchanging hand. And everybody ought to hold to it, and hold on to my God's unchanging and everybody ought to hold to his hand, to God's unchanging. And you ought to build, and your hopes on things eternal. And everybody ought to hold to God's unchanging hand. And everybody ought to hold to it, and hold on to my God's unchanging Everybody ought to hold to his hand, to God's unchanging. And you ought to be building your hopes on things eternal. And everybody ought to hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen. You hanging on to his hand? Amen. All right, now let's turn to page number 345 as we bring. I would love Brother Palmore up to the uh, to the pulpit this morning. Is it kind of warm in here? Is it all right? <laughs> all right now. Okay now. All right. Just, just making sure to me it's a little bit warm, but it's okay. Page number 345. Uh, when that roll is called up yonder, want to be there. Hanging on to his hand down here. When it's called, we're going to be up there looking in, in Jesus' face. Getting that answer, saying, well done, my good and faithful servant. There's so much going on down here in, in society. It seems like every other day there's a mass shooting. You know, you just don't know. You just don't know. The kids, you know, adults, you can't go anywhere. But one thing I do know is we got to hold on to his hand. We just don't know. It's just a shame the way it is, but we just got to keep prayerful and just keep holding on to his hand. Page number 345, as you bring Brother Powell Moore up uh, to the pulpit. If you have it, let's sing together. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, of time shall be no more. And, and the, the morning, morning breaks eternal, eternal bright and fair. And when, when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore. And, and the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. Will. And when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, and when the road is called up yonder, and when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and glorious morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. And when the chosen one shall gather to their home beyond the sky and the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. And when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the road is called up Yonder, and when the road, when the road is called up yonder, and when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. And let us labor for the master.
Mr. from the dawn to setting sun And let us talk of all this wondrous love and care And then when all of life is over And our work on earth is done And the roll is called up yonder I'll be there and will and when the roll, when the roll is, is called up yonder, I'll be under there. And when the roll, when the roll is, is called up yonder, I'll be under there. And when the roll, when the roll is, is called up yonder, and when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. And when the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. And when the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. And when the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, and when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Well, brother Slade's not warm in here yet. <laughs> By the time I get started, it'll be heating up here pretty soon. <clears throat> Amen. I decided on something we're familiar with, Brother Slay. We've come this far by faith. That's something not we on we not only heard. Amen, Corner. It's something we've said. And we said it with conviction. However, once again, I'm truly thankful to Brother Terry Atwater Sr., our minister, our preacher. I like preacher, Brother Hall. Giving me this opportunity to stand before you in good health. got my water, Brother Slay. You know what I'm saying? So don't be scared. <laughs> the report from my physician, my doctor, she told me to keep doing what I've been doing. You know, always worried about your H1, H1C. Is that what they call it? Well, A1C, or whatever they call it. Sister Hall is 7.0. So I've been working on that real hard, eating food that don't taste good. Man, but I've been doing it. Okay, then. Y'all pray for me this morning so that Brother Atwater get a good report when he get back over here. Is that all right? Well, all right, then. I thank God for you and seeing you. Church, haven't the brothers been doing a good job so far this morning? They certainly have. Uh, <clears throat> but then again, I encourage us all not to overwork Brother Slate sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, go ahead and help him out. He's no, no slouch when they get up here because he'll help us out. And I know that that's not easy. We love you, Brother Slate. And in the future, I'm going to ask everybody to do better. I'm going to try to do better myself. <clears throat> now, I'll say this. I just opened up my mouth and sing. I don't know very much about bass, alto, and soprano. Wherever I fall, that's where I am. And I'm going to be doing, <laughs> I'm going to be doing my thing right there. You know what I'm saying? Amen. But let me share this with you. We've come this far by faith. I want to say that I believe and I feel that I've graduated from being a visitor to the North Shore Church of Christ. Amen. The Sanders family have come to know me pretty good. And I know them. Many times, you might not notice, but a brother may have to go to work on Sunday. And he strives to make an effort 
to make it right with God. And sometime before you get started, he's already heard me do a little preaching. And I serve communion. He can go to work in good faith. That's all right. That's better than not showing up because you're going to get time and a half and double time. It's about the money and not about God. But that be as it said. I just have to say that. But I want to just let you know, uh, being an integrated member of the North Shore Church of Christ, an assistant to Brother Terry Atwater Sr., uh, I feel comfortable in knowing uh, some things about you. Now, don't get upset. I'm not going to tell or say anything about your personal business or anything like that. But I have observed you as Christians and members of the Lord's church. And I thank God for you for allowing me to be around you during these past couple of years. It's been kind of scary, Brother Heisen. Uh, I'm telling you, the world and the North Church, Church of Christ, uh, has been dealing with the present pandemic. Now, I'm not going to preach about the pandemic, but I can't go without mentioning it. Uh, the Palmore family lost a cousin to the COVID back in 2020, I think it was. So I know this thing is real. They call it a virus. I've dealt with viruses before. So I hastily scooted on down to the VA and got vaccinated, although my friends were laughing at me and all kinds of things like that. And then I turned around and got two boosters. <laughs> then, and, and, and I got it, Sister Vanessa, I got it on my cell phone. So whenever I go someplace, I bring it up. Don't start that with me. I'm going to come in and sit down and eat. I ain't... <laughs> I ain't carrying out all the time. With all this space you got in here, I don't feel uncomfortable at all. But you know something? Uh, they were laughing about whether to wear a mask or not. You know, I got my mask. And I'll put it on in a minute. Uh, uh, get vaccinated or not. Get boosted or not. I don't know. It's not been easy for many of us. But as for me, I've learned some lessons after I lost a cousin, you see. It has been reported that the number of cases are still rising again. But I've observed you. Uh, I'm here, and I want to tell you about the North Shore Church of Christ. Through it all, this body of Christians has come this far by faith. Praising God, yeah, through worship, prayer, fellowship, following the oversight of our leadership who have been awesome during this time from the beginning up until now. And I'll just follow their instructions. They say, well, Brother Palmore, you have to put that mask back on can y'all still hear me? Well, then that's be all right. I can wear it and be safe like Brother Terry Atwater the second, and Brother Slay and Brother, Brother, <laughs> Brother Hall, my friend. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, the elders of this great church who oversee me and make sure I do the things that are right. See me, Bonita? They can't tell you that I wasn't following instructions, drinking my water. I want y'all to feel good that I bring this to you. Now, <clears throat> I can tell by the way you've inspired me, North Shore Church of Christ, is still here. 
by nothing more than our faith in God, his son, his spirit, and the word. And I believe that the book of Hebrews will show how you did it. If it's all right, brothers. Now I got Brother Hall and Brother Isom as always to do some good reading for me because if I get excited, I might pass over some stuff. But I'm going to do my best to do what the Lord told me to do. Now, then Brother Isom do a superb job in reading that scripture. You know it very well. And what I decided to do, and I jotted it down, and I let Brother uh, Sims in the media room know, and I hope I gave him some good instructions on an outline. And y'all pray for me that I'll follow it, Sister Vanessa. Uh, <laughs> all right, Brother Isom, I hear you over there. Uh, I'm feeling good already. Now, uh, I want to say that uh, this is how it's going to go. I'm going to be working with the superior principle along with the superior person. The person is Jesus Christ, however, and the principle is faith. And then I'm going to give you two points, if I can get to them, that I believe Brother Slate's preacher, he'll help me out. Actually, Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews, gives more of a description than a definition. You see, uh, you know what a description entails when the authorities want some information from you. Uh, they'll say, can you describe what he was wearing? Or can you describe uh, the, the shape of the individual? Were they tall or were they short? Things of this nature. I just got excited and mad one time. I said, you want me to describe something as scared as I was? I don't know how tall she was. I don't know what color her hair was. Can I pick a color? It was blue braids, green braids, brown braids, and a color I've never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not picking on anybody, but description. Then it gives a demonstration. You've seen some demonstration here recently. They're trying to calm down that incident on January 6th. No, that was a bad demonstration of behavior. And you take uh, our children, whether they be small or whether they're like Deuce, his children graduating from college, see adults act like that make, makes me just upset sometimes because I tell folks all the time uh, that have children and grandchildren. I even got great-grandchildren now that I've learned about. You know, sometimes they don't tell you, Brother Slay. You have to find out through the grapevine. But anyway... You can tell when they're yours. Amen. You can tell. You can tell. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, God has been good to us all, and I just want to encourage you and uplift you, the North Shore congregation, for a job well done. Now, let's deal with this, Brother Palmore. Superior principle. The Bible teaches us in the book of Hebrews 
chapter 11 all the way down to the end of the chapter is such an encouraging uh, book. A superior principle of faith and the fact that Christ is a superior person. From the Hebrews, the first chapter down through the sixth chapter, and that he uh, exercises a superior priesthood. I had given Brother Hall a scripture, and I'm going to have him read that in a few minutes. And I also have given Brother I some a scripture and I'm going to have him to read that scripture when I get this thing worked up a little bit. Now, <clears throat> here's what I believe the superiority of faith means. Listen to me, amen, corner. Does this make sense? Faith is either pistua Pistuis, another slave in Greek. I know you're not Greek scholars, but I want to give you the context that's what's written in the word immediately for us preachers, remote, what comes before it and what comes after it. But now, primarily, it's a firm persuasion it's a conviction based upon hearing what you hear. Always in God or Christian things or spiritual things. Our conviction. When you are convicted, you believe in that. Whatever you are convicted to. As a matter of fact, You'll give some example. That's demonstrating and practicing it. This is the reason I usually say, especially when it's convenient, that the practitioners of habitual sinning will cause a person to lose their soul. Not a not a not, not a lot of amens on that. It must not have found, <laughs> found a lodging place because uh, just keep lying. Keep stealing. Keep cheating. And leaving home on Monday and not going back until Thursday. You, you headed to be lost. You headed to hell. Huh? You know, my son's scared to say it, but I said, the Bible said, the rich man lifted up his eyes in hell. That's in the Bible. <laughs> All righty. So now I got the principle. Now let's get the person, Jesus Christ. Brother Hall would you read that scripture for me? I believe I gave you in the book of Hebrews chapter 8 and verse number 6. I want you to get there right quick yes, if you have your Bibles. And listen to Brother Hall and check him out and follow along with him. And it reads. And it reads. But now. But now. Has he obtained. He, uh, has he obtained a more excellent a more excellent ministry ministry by how much by how much also he is the mediators a mediator of a better covenant a better covenant which was established which was established upon better promises established upon better promises yes, sir. now let me say something here why is this covenant so much better than the old covenant? Well, you get back to lying, stealing and cheating, doing those things 
that you know you had no business doing, they stone you. And, you know, one of my relatives who I was trying to convert to Christianity would always say, they call me Bob, Reverend Robertson, I know about you. You better be glad they don't stone people today. I guess she was saying, uh, she's looking at how I've been living and everything. I said, but you know something? Uh, <clears throat> the things I used to do, I don't do no more. I know you wish you could say the same thing. If you pay attention to me and you get baptized for the remission of your sins and become a member of the Lord's church, then you'll be able to walk with your head held up high just like I do. And I know all my friends going to talk about me and, and, and a lot of times behind my back, but that's all right. But when somebody died in their family, or when somebody go to jail in their family, they don't laugh then. They call me because they want some consolation and some help. I can say this about the North Shore Church of Christ. Uh, people have seen you come to worship every Sunday during the pandemic when a lot of people stayed home. Even some members stayed home too. And then again, Brother Eisman, that wasn't the only place that some of them were staying. Amen. All right. All right. I'm not picking on you. I leave Brother Edwards Sr. to deal with that. But I can say this. I come here as a Lord's will every Lord's day because I can't find any better place than to be than to be around with you. You are remarkable. I'm going to write about it. So then when churches was closing down, uh, we were opening up. Am I right about it? Uh, look at the awesome leadership we have. All they did was say, okay, one sit here and one sit over there. Okay, one sit back there, one sit back there. When it's time to go, no, we're not running out of here like game bangers. No, you're going to go out of here one at a time. Let's ease out so we don't have no congestion. Don't stand in the vestibule picking at the deacons. Just go on out and have to say, hey man, go on, go on. just go ahead on. If you got the auger, go home and auger. Don't be out there and I'm Amen. We've been blessed. You've been blessed. You've done a great, great job. A superior, a superior principle, faith, by a superior person, Jesus Christ. A better covenant built upon better promises. Revelation 2.10 says, Be thou faithful until death. I'll give you a crown of life that fadeth not away. Certainly that will be a day that all of you will be rejoicing in that day. That's good. Now, <clears throat> Brother Ice was reading to our hearing. Now faith. What about faith? It is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of a thing not seen. The substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Three things right there. The evidence of things uh, and the substance and the things not seen. Well, I'm going to say uh, evidence is convictions. It's an inward conviction that God gives you that he's going to keep his promise. Yes. Have you ever had a promise, been promised something, and it didn't come through? Yes. You can say amen. Yes. Uh, somebody in here has been promised something that they didn't get. Yes. Amen. Now I can remember when I was in the military, Brother Slay, you know that those of us who were airborne was going to get a raise. And I stayed there for over 36 months, uh, depending on uh, somebody giving me a raise. Uh, you're going to get a couple of extra dollars for jumping out of airplanes. And when you hit the ground, you're going to go to the offensive and do your job. Well, I did my job. 
but I never got a raise. I said, that was a promise you promised me uh, that you never kept. So it's tough when you are given a promise and nobody keeps it. Now, <clears throat> those of you who are teachers, I can see Sister Grant and Sister Vanessa, bless her, Sister Hall, and everything like that. You got trouble if you promise them kids a treat and you don't give it to them. You could say, man, <laughs> you just ask a teacher, how them children look when you promise them something and they don't get it. They look real good all day till they don't get what they promised. They can look pretty bad. Am I right about it? Man, you ever seen them children when Brother Edwater can't come up with some candy? Lord, have mercy, man. They'll go tell Sister Edwater in a minute, in a heartbeat. Uh, but then again, they'll meet him at the office. Then he'll make good on his promise. God will make good on his promise. Uh, and I can tell you, <clears throat> uh, the, convict, the inward convictions, certainly uh, we believe that God will do what he said he will do. That's the reason you were here every Sunday during this pandemic. You believe that God will do what he said he would do. And then again, uh, the next one uh, that we see says the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Well, substance by definition is stand. Stand up. Stand tall. It means to support. In other words, it's just like a foundation that supports a building. I was amazed when they were showing on news media a building hammered by a storm, perhaps maybe even a hurricane, tore up everything around that building. Uh, but the building was still standing. Because it has been said that since there have been so many of these horrific storms that the engineers decide to build it with what they call a sure foundation. Man, I'm telling you, uh, a substance, you see someone who can't stand who sees someone who gets real jittery when it comes uh, to prescribing a faith that transforms into obedience? See, if you believe God and you trust him, then you will do what you say. Well, I think he said, Brother Slate, why call me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say? Then? Am I right about it? And that's one thing it's been a difficult for humanity as a whole to deal with. To do what you're supposed to do. To do what you were told to do. And I can remember my great grandmother, they used to call her Big Mama. And when she says something, she meant it. Am I right about it? Did you do what I told you to do? And I have to think about it a little bit. She said, if you have to take that much time to think about it, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do it. Am I right about it? So sometime I was there, Brother Ives, and I was wondering to say yes or take my time and think about the dudes, or I didn't know what to do. So I get into a little frenzy. So I would say, well, <clears throat> I was back there getting some water. I was in the bathroom on my way to do what you told me to, told me to do. And she used to use this term, no bigger lie ever been told. <clears throat> uh, but you have to give me A for effort for trying. Am I right about it? You have to stand for something. That You have to have a foundation for life. That's some substance. And the reason you have so many shootings, you have so much killing. They talk about Chicago all the time. I say, well, I know it's bad down here, but I make it by prayer wherever I'm going every day. I said, but they shoot people in Texas, Alabama, 
in California too. I said, because those individuals that are involved in such behavior in crime, I'm getting excited, Vanessa, uh, don't have no substance in their life. They don't have very much to stand on. And if you stand on whoever got the biggest gun and the most bullets, you will always wind up falling because somebody somewhere always have a bigger gun and more bullets than you do. And they're saying, just take all the guns. Well, go ahead and do that. That's what you've been talking about for a long time. When you take all the guns, then they're going to start getting knives and start cutting one another. What you need to do is deal with individuals that don't have no substance in their life, like Brother Isom said. Or you can get out. You can get released. You can get freedom. But what you going to do when you leave here? If you coming back, you may as well stay here now. That way we don't have to spend a lot of money chasing you down and arresting you and putting cuffs on you. That's what I tell, tell my son to tell his, his daughters. I've never seen, maybe I better stop here, Benita, and say something about some of these sisters. Girls toting more guns than boys. Carjacking and hijacking. It's a good thing, though, that North Shore Church of Christ can be ascribed to doing those things that please God. Nobody has ever said those people are just like everybody else. Yes, all they do uh, is pass around collection baskets. I hadn't seen a collection basket in here in a long time. And like Brother Atwater said, we're still surviving by our faith in following and obeying God. But rather they saying, no, they're not like everybody else. I've never seen anybody like them. They don't even have an organ in their church building. They don't even have a choir up there singing while the preacher is preaching. Well, we don't find that in the Bible. What I found in the Bible, in the book of Ephesians, speak to yourselves in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart as unto the Lord. That's everybody in the Lord's house. And be careful if Brother Slay pick up and he announce a tune that you don't too much like. You better sing it anyway. Amen. Because <laughs> God looking at you, or oh, he's all right with Brother Slay. He announced to him, he just want to check and see if everybody singing. Well, yeah, don't look at me like that. He said, well, two or three are gathered in my name. I'm in the midst of him. He might be sitting next to you when you get mad and close your songbook. Amen. He's just doing like this here. Mm -hmm. Am I right? <laughs> you might even check you out, Brother Slate. They opened up the songbook and got their head down there like they singing and ain't singing at all. Oh, no, you're not fooling God. You can't fool God. You can fool me, but you'll never fool God. You hear what I'm saying? We've come this far by faith. You didn't do it by yourself. I didn't do it by myself. Someone asked me, how do I make it up here every Lord's Day? Man, uh, if I wasn't driving, I'd catch the train. If I couldn't catch the train, I'd ride a bicycle. If I couldn't ride a bicycle, I'd hitchhike. I'd get here some kind of way, and I'd be here to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And I want to see every last one of you when I get here. Amen, because I know that I'm in the fellowship. The word fellowship means joint participants. Am I right about it? Uh, it don't mean a spectator. It means we are in this thing together. And you look up and you see everybody uh, Sister Lynham, and you might notice it. Well, where's Brother Palmo at? I'll be on my way somewhere around this. Let's wait a few minutes. I'll be here. And I'm glad to be missed sometime because I know I'm on my way here and I counted for. So 
But that being said, uh, then we got the witness. The word said not seen. The evidence of things not seen. Well, I can tell you this. Uh, there's a whole lot of things I haven't seen. A lot of things you haven't seen. Uh, do you have to see everything to believe in God? Uh, I've seen uh, my gas bill screwed up, Brother Ison. I want to turn it down so it could be a little lighter on my <laughs> checking account. But in Chicago, last evening, my son said, Dad, uh, it's raining out there. I said, yeah, well, I'm going to the North Shore in the morning, so it'll be clear up and everything like that. He said, however, it's a little chilly in here. <laughs> I said, yes, I know. I'll turn these ceiling fans off and uh, see how that do. He said, no, you need to turn the thermostat up son <laughs> so I turned up the thermostat don't mind doing it because I'm going to pay the bill anyway amen so then uh, I just believe that God has been good to you been good to me and he to told us how to do this uh, by faith now let me tell, tell you something uh, uh, you really have to get into what you really doing? You really have to be mindful of the word. Brother Sanders, you know, every now and then, say amen in such a way that you want the angels in heaven to hear you. It's almost like you're getting assurance uh, that the Almighty is pleased with what you're doing. Just make sure you're doing what the Almighty wants you to do. Is that all right? And so, I really think, and I really believe, it's important for us to all ascribe to the living God, His Son, and the Holy Spirit in a manner that's described on the pages of Inspiration. I'm trying desperately to stay within Hebrews chapter 11 because I believe it, 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 it just gives us what we need to continue to live soberly and righteously, righteously during the pandemic. Uh, someone says it's not really over yet. Well, God is still on his throne anyway. And one time, the old preacher told me, and I was hurting, too, and I wanted to hear some good news. He said, well, just praise the Lord anyhow. I said, hurting like this? Uh, you don't really feel like worshiping God. He said, just praise him anyway. And I've learned that it'll work. Now, the devil will get on your shoulder and whisper in your ear, so you don't need to go down there today. Uh, you hurting. You done got old. Uh, just, 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 just take it easy. Chill. That's not what he says sometimes. And you know you need to get going. Am I right about it? So no matter how bad I hurt, Sister Hall, or how awesome I do not look, uh, I have to get on. Uh, on board and get going anyhow. And then someone may holler through the house, uh, are you going to be going today? I say, yep, I'm on my way right now. Do you need anything before I go? Let me know right now because I'm on the move. I can't stop now. Am I right about it? I said, no. Why you keep doing what you're doing? It's because I want to be around for a little while. Now then, Ah, we have a good description of faith. You have a good description from the Palmore perspective of the North Shore Church of Christ. 
I know at first I was acting kind of like a visitor, but I'm one of y'all now, whether you too much want me to be or not. You just have to accept me as I am. And Sister Terry McBride said, just get up there and preach. I said, well, I don't know about video streaming me on no television because I don't act like these television preachers. Uh, you know, <laughs> I just, she said, just be you. Well, I'm just going to be me. You have shown me. North Shore has shown Waukegan, Illinois, how it's done. And it's done by a principle of faith and a principle leader, Jesus Christ. Now, we're going to have to do, do some demonstrating. Well, what do you mean, Brother Palmore? We talked about demonstrating. That means you want to show up and show somebody what and how and what you believe. Amen. Have you ever noticed backsliders? Have we ever preached and told y'all about backsliders? Uh, that's somebody that was glad when they closed everything during the pandemic. You follow me? Uh, <clears throat> this is coming to me as I go along now because I'm finding out some things that we really need to know. And what they do is they look for an excuse not to be here. Huh? They look for an excuse not to be here. Do you hear me? But when the administrators announce that they're going to have a giveaway, <laughs> then they have an excuse why they should be here because they always have a need, you see. But since you always have a need, <clears throat> why aren't you here uh, all the time? You see, uh, I make it my business to make sure that I follow the description that my doctor prescribes to me. So I go to them all the time. I don't go to them when I start to hurt so bad and I can't stand it. Then they can't figure out what to do with me. I be with them all the time. And I began to ask them questions. Now, what do you think about this? Members that stay away from the Lord's house too much miss out on what they need. So then, Deuce, maybe even Brian Isom, can't prescribe something to help them uh, to get better. I know... I'm jumping all around this outline, but it's good for us because I'm hitting some things that we need to hit. Now, <clears throat> that being said, as I read Hebrews chapter 11, uh, that was some demonstration going on that I think we cannot uh, overlook. Yes, it talks about the faithful, the old, and even now, the new. Uh, when I look back and I study this, uh, somewhere I found this concept, the Hall of Fame. Have you ever heard about the Hall of Fame? It seems that some celebrity or some great athlete is being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Well, I look at the elders, and I just miss Brother Alan Mallory. But if it's a Hall of Fame up there, I believe he was inducted inside. Because from his example, for me and to me as a preacher, he kept me going. I can't say that I wanted to quit, but there's been times that I wanted to stay at home. 
<laughs> but you have a man like that to say, well, I'm so glad to see you. I just like the way you preach every now and then. I said, wow, uh, uh, the devil is picking at me now because I'm thinking, uh, I don't know. Uh, he's saying uh, uh, how much he admired me and all this kind of stuff. I haven't really done anything or tried to be admired by anyone. But I just tried to do God's will and preach uh, just like I see it, you see. Uh, that's the best way to do it. I some do preach just like you see things ought to be preached. And I sometimes do that. I do that. So then I just demonstrate when I'm up here in this pulpit how I try to live and have faith and follow God and love you all and be with y'all. That's what I want people to know. So then when the same person asks me the same thing every Sunday, I have to tell them the same old story. You know, I don't work on Sunday on no job. You know, I go to church on Sunday. Do you still go way up? I said, it ain't no way up nowhere. It's just right up there in Waukegan. <laughs> See, you go up to Milwaukee to get drunk on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Why can't I drive to Waukegan and go to church on Sunday? Amen. So don't do me like that. Y'all pray for me that I don't act like that all the time, but I can't help it. You see what I'm saying? Demonstrate to me what you are about. Am I right about it? Show us up. Am I right about it? So then uh, I gave Brother Isom a scripture. I'm going to try to close out on this one, Brother Isom, and I believe it's important. That's Hebrews again, chapter 11. I wanted to say in chapter 11, I want him to get to me uh, verse 32 on down to the remainder of this chapter. That's verse 40. Follow along with him. You're going to find out something. I'm going to help him out a little bit every now and then because I know time is getting away from me. But I want to share this with you because I believe it's important. I want you to know that you're important. You're important to God because when others seem like they've given up on everything, you just kept coming out just kept obeying the elders. You just kept listening to Brother Edward Sr. preach the word of God. Listen to Brother Isom teach Sunday school. Brother Slate singing his song. And uh, Brother Hall saying amen, amen. Well, it makes you feel all right. All right, Brother Isom, you can go ahead on and start. And I'm going to help you out a little bit. Now, you just watch this and follow along with me. And what shall I, I and, more say? And what shall I more say? What else can I say? What else can you say? What else can they say, Brother Isom? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson. Samson. And of Jephthah. Jephthah of David, David also. And Samuel. Samuel. And of uh, the time. I mean, uh, what, how much time would it take for me to just tell you about these uh, champions of the Hall of Fame. Yes, Gideon. Yes, Bera. Samson. Oh, yes. Uh, even Jephthah, David. Uh, go ahead, uh, uh, Brother Isom. Who through faith. Who through faith. Subdued kingdoms. Subdued kingdoms. Wrought righteousness. Wrought righteousness. Obtained ob promises. Obtained promises. Stop the stop mouth the of a lion. A lion. I know you're not uh, going to stop the mouth of a lion. Uh, you don't. You don't. You don't have that kind of power and that strength. So they tell me that a lion, at his less weight, is about 500 pounds. Now my uncle had a cat, nowhere near 500 pounds. Sometimes the animal can get pretty rough. Imagine if he was 500 pounds. And we know that he's not a vegetarian. He lacks meat. Am I right about it? And the kind of things I dine on, he would love. So I'm not going to fool with no lion. But I can tell you this. It says wrought righteousness. That's not difficult, Brother Slay. Uh, right is different from wrong. Wrong is different from right. But it seems like now 
the administration, uh, the government has gotten this thing all crossed up. It seems like the new right is wrong. The more wrong individuals do, it seems like they get away with it, like it's right. Well, if you can get me and back me up and ask for my registration and driver's license, what you going to do when someone don't have a registration and don't have no driver's license? What you going to do about them? How come there's so many of them riding around? It's more of them riding around than us that have driver's license. It seems like you do wrong and you can get away with it. And I can see that sometimes it's a joke sometimes. That's the reason I stopped watching these programs of the judges on television. Uh, I guess they get paid for going down there to act so ugly and they're all of this kind of stuff like this. But I'm telling you, wrought righteousness. Uh, do what's right. Am I right about it? Uh, they subdue kingdom. Well, why don't we subdue our behavior, how we act, how we carry ourselves. My parents used to say, well, you're all right. You got your new shoes on and everything like that. Dress me up, Brother Slayson. Now, you make sure that you act right and carry yourself. I had to learn how to carry myself. See, walk and talk and all things like that. Learn how to say hello. I learned how to say yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. I guess that's a joke or something that's not uh, common nowadays. And I say hi to people. They look at me, roll their eyes, and turn up their nose. But that's all right. I'm going to say hi anyway. The only thing you can do is attack me physically and things like that. But I know lawyers. I got some lawyers in this church I can call upon. I got a defense a lawyer, and I got a prosecuting attorney right here in this church. Hey, man, I got you going and coming if you mess with me. I know Sister Witherspoon, and I know Sister Marlene <laughs> Isom. Am I right about it? And Sister Alicia. Yes, man, I got juice, so you better not bother me at all. Am I right about it? Demonstration of faith. Go ahead, Brother Isa. I'm going to close. We're going to read a little bit more of that. Quenched the violence of fire. Quenched the violence of fire. Escaped the edge, the edge of the, of the sword. sword. Out of the weakness were out made weak strong. Out of weakness was made strong. Waxed valiant in, in fight. Turned, turned to fight the, the armies of the age. Waxed aliens. valiant, strong. Even when you're weak, even when you are weak, you can show strength. No matter how hard it is to get here, get here. You made it here. No matter how much of a struggle you had in life, you still made it here. All I ask you to do in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, just keep on doing what you've been doing in order to get here. Now, don't worry about what people are going to say about you because the devil is mad at each and every last one of you. But that's all right. He's been mad at you before. Am I right about it? Well, well, what's the difference? So he gonna, People are going to say something about you anyway. And, uh, you know, one thing they're going to say about you is that Benita said, yeah, you know, they're still going down there like it ain't no pandemic going on. Am I right about it? Wearing masks. They even give you a mask. Got mad, got brother L.C. Jones passing our mask when they come through the door. And then uh, they got Bella Gaston with a thermometer. And he's he measuring your temperature and things like that. Yeah, but see, with the temperature, I get to go ahead. Each Lord's Day that I come up in here, that's the reason I start on Friday to make sure that I'm going to be all right. I have to cool it sometime. Am I right about it? Stay away from the rib tips and stuff like that so that my pressure don't go up. But anyway, I'm still doing good. But I asked him just a few more, and I'll have to quit. Go ahead on. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and, and imprisonment. imprisonment. Yeah, people talk about you. They say it's cruel. Has anybody ever been cruel to you? I've just seen people that act so cruel, but that's individuals that are not aware of the God of heaven. They don't believe. There are some people that don't believe in anything. And I met a young man. Uh, he said, 
I'm not an atheist. He said, atheists don't believe in nothing. He said, I believe in me. I said, you believe in you. So maybe that's the reason you don't have no friends. You only believe in you. You don't believe in having friends. You don't believe in nobody else. You don't believe in you, you, you don't believe in nothing. Yes, I do. I believe in me. I said, what are you going to do when you have a problem in life and you only believe in you? Do you believe you can heal yourself? I start getting nosy now. Do you believe you can heal yourself? If you believe you can heal yourself, what are you doing with a blue cross, blue shield card? Amen. You get in line at the doctor's office before we do. But you believe in you. You must believe in him. You pay the bill. Oh, yes. You don't believe in nothing but you. Well, I can tell you this. Ah. Uh, you can be all you think you can in and of yourself. Stay at home. Don't visit the sick. Don't come to worship. Don't attend Sunday school. Don't stay for Sunday school. I'm not going to get on that one for a long time. But now, I, I stay with Brother Isom. If I don't have an emergency, I'm going to be right here. Everybody in the church don't have an emergency when it comes to Sunday school. I just thought I'd run that by you. I've been here long enough where I could, I could say that. And you know something? You can get some valuable lessons uh, from Sunday school. And let me say this. I know this is a little bit away from what I got in that outline, but I tried to follow it, Brother Isaac. But uh, I commend Deuce and Brother Isaac because they teach from the real deal. You follow me what I'm saying? It's not just the Bible. They go through some of the things that's written in Hebrews chapter 11. If anybody knows about some struggling people, it's these gentlemen up here, our elders, you see. But don't be, but don't worry. Don't be dismayed. Uh, you can be victorious even through weakness. Go ahead and read a little more, Brother Ison. I'm getting close to verse 40. They were stoned. They, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and, and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in the mountains and, and in the and dens and, and caves and of the earth. And, the, and these all, having obtained a good rapport through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without, without us should not be made and you listen perfect. To good, Brother Isa. I want to just finish with this. And all these, and all these, all these are having obtained a good report even from city officials, Brother Jeff McBride, who can share with us that the North Shore Church of Christ have received some good reports throughout this whole community. That's important to me. That lets me know that everything that I've witnessed and I've fellowshiped with and enjoyed spiritually uh, is on the real, just like these gentlemen over here teach. And I just wanted to let you know you did it all by faith. You came this far by faith. When others were scared to leave their home, but they were still doing things that caused them to get sick, but you held on by your faith. Yes, God provided something better for us that they without us should not be made whole. This is an example. 
the Faith Hall of uh, Fame is an example of how it was done back then. No, they weren't able to come to a church of Christ, but they had the Old Testament law. Then Brother Hall read that Jesus Christ, God's Son, came on the scene to produce a better covenant built on a better promises. Now all of us have a right to the tree of life. Is that all right? And so then that uh, when Christ died on the cross, it is said by the slave that his blood went back to atone for those who obeyed, who did not have a chance to be members of the church of Christ. Some of my denominational friends don't understand that. But I do, because it's right here in the book. You walk by faith and not by sight. And I guarantee you, if you do, and if you continue to do, God will continue uh, to bless you. And I want you to continue to pray for me. I have a song of invitation. I'm going to ask Brother Slay to have us stand and sing that invitation uh, in just a second. But I want you to pray for me that the next time I give Brother Andre Sims an outline, I'm going to follow it a little better than I did this time. But I just want you to know where I was trying to go. And maybe you could help me get there. And uh, if you feel that I didn't make it there, well, then you just let Brother Atwater know. Just give him a little more time so he can finally get where he was going the last time. That'd be all right. For those sitting in our audience, perhaps you're not a member of the Church of Christ. Maybe you're not a member of any church. Well, the elders, the deacons, and myself, Brother Ed Water, although he's absent, he would extend an opportunity for you to believe in God's Word. Uh, and if you believe in God's Word and you're willing to change, why well, change, Brother Palmore? Well, if you're not following what's taught in the Bible, you can start following what's taught in the Bible. All you have to do is hear God's word and believe it and repent. What does that mean? Stop doing what you used to do that's contrary to God's word and start doing what's written on the pages of inspiration. Then confess to God yes, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Somebody sooner or later going to find out that Jesus is the Son of God. But I can tell you, Putin, is that his name over in Russia? He thought that was going to be a walkthrough over there in Ukraine, just go over there and just stomp them down in one day. But it just goes to show you when folk have fight in them and they have belief in them, it's hard to wipe them out. Amen. Uh, he might do it, but it's not going to be no pushover. Then you must be baptized in water. Uh, he that believeth and is baptized, the Bible say, shall be saved. You need to be saved from the sins of this world. Just keep practicing those things you've been practicing and doing it like you've been doing it. I know you got faith because you couldn't make it this far by yourself. God helped you all the way. Brother Slave, what's the name of that hymn number you're going to sing? 261. Love lifted me. 261 as I call on Brother Slade to come forward and lead us in that hymn. Let us all stand. I was sinking deep, deep in sin, far, far from, from the peaceful shore, shore and very, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. And but the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry.